when there was nobody, when they couldn't get any information, when they were cut off. Jack Schneerman is the city manager of Long Beach, Long Island, where he says that all cell phone towers went down during Sandy. He described the experience at a recent FCC hearing that looked at how the cell networks performed during the storm. There was one woman particularly who passed away um, of natural causes, an elderly woman, and her daughter had to walk a, literally a mile and a half from her home to police headquarters just to say, listen, my mom has passed and I thought I should tell somebody. So to be prepared for the next disaster, Schneerman wants better access to cells on wheels, called cows, cell towers that can be moved from place to place. He wants backup power at cell towers and better access to the cell providers themselves. He said he didn't even know who to call about the city's problems. The city's IT department flagged a Verizon tech off the street to help us find out who in Verizon could help. We needed to get somebody to come and help us. Here's the thing. Cell providers aren't regulated like, say, the power companies. Remember all those reports about how many customers were without electricity during the storm? Cell providers aren't required to give updates about the status of their networks. We guess that there about 25% of the cell network went down in the metro area and surrounding areas, but we don't have official reporting numbers on it. Susan Crawford is a professor at Cardozo Law School who just wrote a book critical of the telecom industry. She says the backstory here is that we used to have a single bell monopoly. In return for access to public infrastructure, the phone company provided a safe, secure network and agreed to government oversight. When new players like cable and wireless came along... We assumed that cable would compete with phone, phone would compete with wireless, and that therefore we didn't need to have this whole superstructure of regulation placed on these essential wires. It turns out that we were wrong. Crawford argues that competition hasn't assured reliable service. And these problems are now magnified because a third of people only have cell phones and no landlines, including Crawford. I'm speaking to you on a cell phone because I don't have a landline at home. One commonly proposed solution is to mandate that cell towers have some form of backup power, like generators. But some tower sites in the city aren't zoned for generators, says Crystal Davis with Sprint Nextel. There are some buildings and some zoning areas where we can put permanent generators, and there are some areas where we're not allowed to. They can have batteries. But those only offer about four to six hours of backup power. Plus, urban sites present additional challenges after a storm. More than 90% of our cell sites are going to be on top of buildings. And these are buildings that we don't own. Um, we actually have to coordinate with the building owners and the landlords to get access to the buildings. Davis says Sprint's network was fully operational within two weeks of Sandy. And going forward, the company wants to coordinate with utilities for better service after storms. AT&T, Verizon Wireless, and T-Mobile all declined interviews for this story. CTIA, a trade group for the wireless providers, resent a statement from the initial days after the storm, which said, in part, quote, where commercial power is lost for four to eight days rather than hours, a mandated eight-hour backup power rule would not have been a panacea, end quote. So while the New York State Senate is considering a bill that would require providers to install backup power on new cell phone towers, Crawford isn't optimistic that Sandy will bring significant changes to the cell networks. So it both looks unlikely that either the FCC or the state is going to be able to pass rules affecting these outages, and it looks unlikely that the carriers are going to take substantial steps to fix their own networks. After Hurricane Katrina, there were similar requests for new regulation and more backup power. But nothing significant changed then either. And providers are actively opposing any new attempts for additional regulation or oversight. Verizon, for example, wants to prevent the FCC from regulating its networks, wireless and broadband. It argues it's a communication company, just like the New York Times. And so any regulation would limit free speech. For WNYC, I'm Tracy Samuelson. New Jersey transit stations are public places. Anyone can stay there as long as he or she wants. The stations that offer seating, food, and drinks tend to attract a large homeless population. People who can take up benches meant for passengers who intend to ride the trains. Laws prevent transit police from asking the homeless to leave stations unless they're breaking rules. But as New Jersey Public Radio's Sarah Gonzalez tells us, NJ Transit is now trying to help the homeless out of train stations. On any given night, dozens of homeless men and women take up the benches at Newark Penn Station. From this road to the wall, all of homeless. John Williams says he's been living at Newark Penn for a couple months. We can sleep sitting up, but if you lay down in here, they're going to wake you. And they're cruel. You know, they're mean. They take the stick and stick you with it. Or 
hit on the side of the, the wall of the bent. His nails are almost an inch long, but the 60-year-old is dressed sharp in a light brown plaid suit with the matching vest and a black leather jacket. Well, I mean, I've been at it on for two months. And it's, 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 I, don't, I don't smell and, and stuff like that, but that's the problem. You got some